Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio all the way across the world with an amazing guy by the name of Steve Stabb. Steve, how are you, brother? Incredibly well, and what a privilege to be here. And uh, I'm just excited because there's a lot of hope in the air, which we hopefully can discuss. So I think... Uh, it's just exciting times as the collective consciousness comes together and you and I have been, you know, we've interviewed so many people and despite the pain, the suffering that people are going through, the despair, the loss, there's a lot of hope. And I do want to leave people with hope, you know, whether it's health and mental, you know, health and physical health, emotional health, spiritual health. I think people need a message of hope that they can be the best they can be, even in this very, very scary, destructive, chaotic world. Steve, you're the man, as I was telling you off air. Well, first off, everybody, um, I was on Steve's podcast, the Made to Thrive podcast. It actually has recently come out. So you will be links in this podcast when it comes out to that one. So definitely watch it because it was epic. Steve's a great interviewer. He's, he's got a very stoic demeanor. He's incredibly knowledgeable. I'm going to get to his bio here in a second. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm honored to have you here too, brother. I know this podcast is going to be amazing. And obviously, I agree with all of that. I'm all about building the new earth, architecting the golden age. So are yeah. you. There are many more people like us now here on this planet at this moment in time. Uh, of course, today is March 16th, uh, Wednesday. But yeah, man, it, 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 you know, I like to say it's the most amazing time ever to be alive because so much is happening literally you know, every nanosecond. But obviously, you have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. So let me give yeah. you guys Steve's bio. Um, he's raised in Johannesburg, South Africa. He's of Greek heritage. A husband and father of two, he has an honors degree in science and many years, excuse me, many years of research in ancient wisdom. And that, of course, that's why, you know, he's on my podcast, coupled with expertise in Chinese medicine and philosophy. He's also an avid athlete, having completed the Comrades Marathon 11 times. That's an amazing accomplishment. As an accredited performance coach and professional biohacker, Steve draws on 25 years experience as an entrepreneur and business owner and has lectured to over 10,000 medical professionals, which is amazing. Uh, he has been featured in multiple mainstream media outlets, while Steve's keynotes have also attracted significant international exposure. He's the podcast host of the Made to Thrive show, as I said, I was on that, which is now in the top 2% of podcasts globally. Steve's podcasts have been collectively downloaded thousands of times. He's also the founder of Made to Thrive, a health optimization company. And together with his team of eight consultants, he has inspired and empowered thousands of people to a life of thriving, which is what matters today, not surviving, thriving. <laughs> Steve's clients range from professionals, executives, and athletes to ambitious everyday individuals, which he partners with in order to unlock the power of their performance, igniting an incremental cycle of continuous optimization to enhance and improve the, their human state safety safely and ethically. Amazing. Thank you again for being here. So again, I'm going to ask you the question. You, you started to answer it already off air, but it's obviously the relevant question of today. Uh, you know, for people like us who are really walking the consciousness, you know, the raised vibrational path, where are we, Steve? Like, do you see humanity self-destructing and rebooting like it obviously has done many times previously? Who knows how many times because they lie to us so much. But I mean, are we going to make it? Are we going to be able to create the golden age, new earth? Absolutely. And I think, uh, like I said before, I'm encouraged because I'm meeting people, whether they're in Australia, you know, you look at the little meme, Australia has fallen, it's all over Twitter, but there are people there that I've connected with, that I've met with, that are really encouraged, you know, they've got hope, they've got strength, they've got passion to see change and bring transformation, and although media stream, you know, the mainstream media has sort of given us this narrative uh, of control and fear, there are people out there that are getting together now and saying enough. Yes, it's a black hole that's sort of trying to envelop people. I've seen it. People have got fear to another degree. I mean, I've been in practice for 23 years as a physician my other life. I've never seen so much fear, anxiety, right. trepidation. Right. A person walks into my rooms, Jay, I can feel the fear. Yeah, I can the feel energy. the vibrational yeah. energy. Yeah. Yeah. And so people have actually taken this on. They've opened these doors into their souls. Right. And uh, they got soul wounds, and they absolutely have been – literally controlled by this narrative but yeah. people like you as i said off air mike salemi many people over I had incredible podcasts with him in terms of his consciousness in the physical field i'm encouraged i'm inspired and i look at my daughter she's five i look at my son 17 and 
It's us to disciple and to encourage and inspire the next generation, you, your right. two daughters, yes. in terms of having an enlightened view of what's happening because people's eyes have been closed. There's a veil over them. Yes. But people yeah. like you and me can facilitate revelation. And that's why I'm encouraged. Awesome, brother. Um, let me go back to some of the things you said. You said a lot of amazing things. You know, about the fear, you know, how palpable it is. You know, as you know, you know, I don't have to tell you, but, you know, and, and most of the Jay Campbell audience has been hammered with this stuff at this point. But again, we are not these physical bodies, right? We are spiritual energy. We're vibrating atoms, molecules, you know, neutrons, protons, electrons, and standing waves, again, of spiritual energy. You know, think of it as like an orb of like plasmatic yeah. fire, but biophotonic plasma. And when you understand that that's what we are, you can understand that when people, as you described them, are so fear consciousness, they're so indoctrinated, they're so scared shitless, let's just say that, that they really are locked up. They're, 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 in, they're unable to even process what is real and what is not real. I'll give you an example. I wanted to set that up. I literally just came back from Cabo San Lucas, my wife, part business, uh, second half vacation. And I was in the gym. And again, this is not calling out a specific group of people on the planet, but I know you've seen this because these are the most indoctrinated. But it seems like the kids under the age of 25 who have literally been baptized with screens since almost birth, right? Like they've had screens in their hands. So they're, they're, they're of the go along, get along, told what to do through the screens world. Well, so I'm watching this girl right next to me. I'm, I'm on the uh, stationary bike, a life cycle, and she's on a treadmill not a treadmill, excuse me, an elliptical. And bro, she has a mask and a face shield. <laughs> and she's exercising and obviously aerobically respirating, you know, at a brisk clip. And there's a part of me that literally wants to get off my bike, walk over her and rip it off her face and say, honey, you'll thank me at some point in your next incarnation when you understand what you're doing is wrong, right? But it's like, that is the palpability of what they, again, whatever that you want to refer to the dark side as the negative half has created in people where they don't even have the basic common sense to understand that exercising when you can't breathe is not prudent. This is how fear-based they are. So it's like what you were saying you know, that's a perfect analogy of letting people understand what you very elegantly and eloquently explained about how pervasive this fear is. And, you know, the question for you is, and, you know, we go deeper into this podcast is, can those people recover at this point? Because there's a lot of psychiatrists and full holistic and functional healthcare people, trauma therapists who are saying a lot of these people are too far gone. You know, they're literally now in autonomic, you know, locked in again, just fear and paranoia, Steve, they can't even sleep. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. Absolutely. And I think, you know, listening to the mass formation psychosis, right. I don't know if you know, Professor no, Desmond, yeah, Robert you know, yeah. 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 And I think that's the problem is the fear is the root. And then psychologically, right. there's a psychosis. Right. So there's a, right. a mental entrapment. There's a yes. soul entrapment. Yes. Now, can these people be helped? Well, the longer they've been living in that psychosis, the longer they've been living fear, the harder it is. You know, it's the yeah. same with the physical body. Someone's been struggling with their physical body for 20 years. They've abused it. Well, it's yeah. not going to be a single switch that's going right. to change that. It's going to be right. continual transformation year in year year out to rewire the neural patterns, to rewire the soul, to heal those soul wounds, to deal with that fear, that biomagnetic flow that is so powerful, that fear that's been entrapped in every single cell that resonates this frequency. Right. Every single cell has been affected by that frequency. So can yeah. it be done? Absolutely. I think no one is past redemption. No one is past revelation. The longer you've been living in it and to the extent and intensity that you've been manifesting, the harder it's going to be. But if you circle yourself around people with the correct flow, with the correct belief that are encircled by love, 
things can happen. Things can, dramatic things can happen. And that's what I'm so excited about, about the psychedelic space because the yeah. psychedelics come in, right. they break that physical barrier. And then if they you've do. got the right team around you, right. the team around you is very important because they can start and initiate that healing process. That can take a moment. Then it's the continual transformation of what are you putting in your life? What are you listening to? What are you seeing? What are you tasting? What are you touching? What are you doing to ensure that you continue in that transformation? Beautiful, man. So I'm speaking, as you know, at the biohacking conference this coming Sunday. I'm really excited yeah. about it. My presentation, dude, is like something I've never done before. It's really, really neat, next level, you know, uh, you know, integrating spirituality uh, into biohacking. So, you know, it's, you know, I had to ask them, like, are you guys sure that, like, I can drop this kind of stuff? You know, for you, me, it's like, wow, you know, yeah, of course, yeah. I, I get it. But, you know, for average people that, you know, are not really into that deep levels of spirituality, we'll see. I mean, it may, you know, may bomb. Who knows? But, I mean, it's phenomenal. And I have an entire uh, section on ethnogens and, you know, how psychedelics and how these, you know, amazing substances can literally – transform consciousness. But, you know, one other thing I wanted to say to you um, to unpack what you just said is you're hundred percent right. And, you know, I go back to Hawkins and he said it only takes between 17 and 20% of the collective consciousness field vibrating, you know, in the reason and love levels to raise the frequency of the entire rest of the planet. Right. So it's the whole analogy of like, five or six people vibrating at love can raise all the ships in the harbor, right? Yeah. So that's where you're, you're exactly right. That's why no one is beyond redemption or revelation because if enough of us walking this path can get more of us to that same level, then it's all going to end. And it really is true. Uh, the guys that own the company, Focus Life Force Energy, who have been on my show a couple of times, uh, amazing dudes, you know, they created and patented a, biofield frequency uh generator not a not really a generator but it basically reads the frequency yeah. of the collective consciousness and they told me and i did not know this but they told me in 2019 in september the human consciousness frequency rose up to 239 points and so again what happened the dark side took us down in a matter of three months from there but you know as they explained it if we would have gotten another 12 points to 250 and neutrality, the matrix would have ended. So we were this close to ending this, you know, negativity and depravity, but yeah. then they obviously submarined us. And, you know, in, uh, as of last year in April of 2021, it was the lowest that it was ever read, at least in, in modern times. And it was at, uh, 68, which is right below grief and right above uh, despair. Now I've talked to those guys pretty frequently and it's back now, thankfully over the 200 level of the light of integrity. So we are moving back up, but it is very interesting. And again, to what you're saying, um, we can't, no one is beyond redemption. Okay. So let's talk about, you know, your, some of your talking points that we're going to cover, but uh, sustainable yeah. transformation. Talk about that. Well, I think it's one of the questions I ask on my podcast, Jay. It's an incredible sort of, you know, you know, question to ask because so many people come into my office, so many people in the biohacking space, they get transformation mainly because they're suffering. You know, it's from pain <laughs> to purpose. You know, they're really you struggling a physically. They ketogenic diet, bro, and they yeah. drop their yeah. calories to 600 calories a day and they lost all their body fat, but they're about to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, there's emotional pain, physical pain, there's suffering, and then they put these things in place. They come and see people like you and me. They hop, optimize their hormones. But, you know, six months, nine months, sometimes a year, depends on the person, depends on their community around them. They're back to their old ways. And so right. the question I've been asking, what are the internal drivers and external drivers for, you know, sustainable transformation? And I think two circles that I put together that overlap, one is identifying being aware and celebrating your unique purpose. So yeah. Jay brings a unique purpose calling to this world. Steve brings a unique calling purpose. Can we identify it based on that calling? Can we be aware of it and can we delight and celebrate it? And I think that is key is that when you have to say no to whatever food or when you have to say yes to that exercise or that breath work or doing that mindfulness or meditation, what is going to be the internal driver that is going to allow you to say yes rather than no, or no rather than yes. 
And purpose is one of those. And even with my son now, we spend many, many, many years identifying a purpose because that's going to lead to the correct behavior. We're not really concerned about behavioral change because that is not going to last. So purpose is one side. The other side is community. And they overlap. Can you take your purpose and serve multiple circles of community? And the most important community that I have is the divine, the Trinitarian God, the divine that I serve, that community that surrounds me. The second being close family, close friends. Third being the mentors and coaches that speak into my life. And the fourth being the world, the cosmos. Can I serve those multiple communities with my unique purpose, my unique calling? And these drivers, when I put these things in place in people's lives, the sustainability of their transformation is far greater because whether it's the coffee barista, Jay, whether it's your daughter, whether it's the person at the office, what purpose and calling are you imparting in those people's lives. And when you can serve people with those gifts, I tell you, you put everything else in place to ensure that you can do that for as long as you can in the best state that you can. Steve, that's beautiful, man. That's some profound stuff. You know, when people ask me, Jay, how do you raise your vibration? And this is now a very, you know, regular question across all comms. And a lot of times now it's evolved to, and please spare me your spirituality, woo woo shit. I don't understand any of that. I have no clue what you're talking about. Just give me basic bread and butter. How do I raise my vibration? And it's literally, it, it's, it's, I'm paraphrasing, but it's basically what you're doing. I tell people, regardless of what it is that you do in this world, serve creation at your highest and best capacity every single day, whether you're a janitor or a CEO and have absolutely no attachment or expectation for what for why you do so, right? So when you say it like that, an average person who doesn't understand the levels of spirituality that you and I are talking about, I love how you say serve the divine, uh, you know, can at least get that. But okay, so what does that mean, serving at my highest and best? Well, it means that you're doing the best that you possibly can do in service to everybody that is involved with you or in your energy field you know, during the course of the day, and you don't have some sort of expectation that they're going to give you something for it, right? You're not going to get paid for it, or you're not going to get an attaboy. You're just doing it because it feels good, right? But you have to get to that level of awareness that giving is so much better than receiving. I mean, again, it's a very, you know, attache, uh, you know, cliche statement, you know, but when you actually are giving from the heart chakra and the heart center, it feels unbelievable. And again, there is no expectation. Why would you have expectation? You feel so good. What else? What, what else would you need to feel whole? Yeah, it's true. It's really, really true. And I think if you can have that unconditional giving, which is what you're yes. saying, not based on conditions, exactly, unconditional love that you're giving people, then I think it, there lies why you're going to put in everything else to ensure that you can continue doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, I, you know, it, it, it's very simple. We're now again in this, whatever you want to classify where we're at right now, you know, the end times, the tribulation, whatever you want to call it, you know, whatever your spiritual, you know, beliefs or awareness and understandings are. But we've come to a place in time, Steve, now where it's literally you're either in service to all of everything, which is again creation. I, I love the indigenous of Mesoamerica, you know, the term is Ani. And it's a divine reciprocity for everything that is alive because everything is alive, right? The rocks, yeah. the trees, the rivers, you, you, you know, you get to that level of awareness and then it's like, okay, well, I, you know, divine reciprocity, as you said, unconditional love is literally having a reverence for all things. So you're not going to litter. You're not going to get out of your car and spill something and not like take ownership for cleaning it up. You know, it, it, you know, again, and these are obviously levels of consciousness that we all go through. You know, the great Walter Russell said, you know, we come out of the womb in the base of the jungle and then the path is to the top of the mountaintop. Yeah. Right. And who knows how many li- lifetimes it takes to go there or get there. Mm-hmm. Right. And we're all walking that same path, but it's like, you have to go, and, and, and experience life and, 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 and again, really evolve consciousness. And obviously, yeah. you know, when you first come out of the womb, you're not high vibration, <laughs> you know, you're in survival. You're just this exactly. little you know, infant and your parents 
are essentially ensuring your survival. And not only are they ensuring your survival, they're mass imprinting your consciousness with their beliefs yeah. and their traumas and everything that they've inherited. And obviously it's just a cycle. So at some point, the individual has to break free of the conditioning of the indoctrination of what our parents transferred over to us. And at that point, once you do, and again, not everybody does. I mean, some at some point, I think I like to think that everybody does, but that's when you can get to where you and I are, you know, now, and you really then can start talking to other people, which obviously we're doing every day um, yeah. about these things, because these aren't things that people regularly talk about, you know, people that go to church, Abrahamic, you know, adherents and, and constituents, like this is not what they talk about. Mm -hmm. I mean, even going to church, almost all of that is service to self. I mean, I don't even want to get into it, right? You know, like people, people give money in the basket and they literally expect money to return because they're putting money in there because they've been told from, you know, Bible, uh, you know, uh, metaphors that like, you know, to give and, to, and you automatically receive, you know, twofold is fourfold. So, I mean, the whole thing is like crazy. So you have to get to a place where you're literally doing it, as you said, completely unconditionally from the heart center in a way that like you, it's just, it's your state of being. It's, it's who you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's what's happening is this collective consciousness of taking gifts, taking callings, you know, taking who you are, because I believe every single person is born with a unique purpose. Definitely. And I think Definitely. if they're born with this unique thumbprint, then it's your and my duty to facilitate that as they grow up in terms of the space they can bring yeah. what they need to in this world. And so that's the most exciting, encouraging thing. And I, and I do think there's a groundswell, Jay. I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I really too. am, despite what's gone on. I'm very excited for the future. Me too. And, you know, obviously I'll be in Vegas this weekend with my wife and I'm very excited to meet people and to just see where it's at. I mean, like, I, like I'll, you know, I'll share this with you right now. Like, I had no idea that they were going to be doing so much about consciousness at this, right? Like, I thought it was just like, you know, general biohacking, you know, yeah. ice baths and red light and, you know, uh, mm -hmm. vibrational stuff. But like, no, I mean, there, there's people literally lecturing on consciousness. So once I saw that, I told, you know, Mick and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Julia and, and the other gal, I forget her name right now, but I just told him, I'm like, look, my presentation is going to be tip of the spear, like health, but I'm going to drop in some spirituality. So yeah. uh, here it is. Look at it. If yeah. you guys are no good with this, let me know so I can change it. Yeah. They're like, no. No, are you going to be able to get that in in 40 minutes? I'm like, no, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to race you. <laughs> but anyway, um, to continue, yes, I'm with you. Consciousness is rising. People are waking up every single day. I know you get this too. You know, people that I never, ever thought would, you know, branch out or reach out to me and ask me a question about something related to consciousness are it's happening. And I, I saw some, some of these people I've been mind blown, like even members of my own family, dude, like, yeah. you know, have been asking me, they're like, Hey, you know, you mind if I ask you a question about, you know, this and, you know, I'll be like, yeah, sure. About what? And then they hit me with it. I'm like, Holy fuck. <laughs> did, did you really just say that? I mean, I'm thinking that I'm not saying it back to him. Cause I'm like, so yeah, never sure. do I get a chance to talk to him, but you are right. Mm -hmm. It is happening. It's just a matter of whether or not enough of us can get to that level to, to, to keep this place from ending. And obviously both you and I are of the mindset that it's not, we are going to overcome. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if you read all the ancient texts and obviously I am still prodigiously reading them, they always say it's up to us. Yeah. It comes down to us. We choose to create the reality that we want for each other. And obviously there've been many times in the past where we blew ourselves up. It's literally <laughs> that simple. So are we going to not blow ourselves up this time? Well, obviously you and I both believe that we are, but there's always yeah. that possibility. There's always an alternative sure. timeline. So to continue on with what your stuff, because obviously you talked about sustainable transformation and that is amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. Can you go a little bit deeper maybe on like how your health coaching differentiates? Mm. Well, the health coaching that we do firstly starts with those. We've got seven pillars at Made to Thrive. First one being purpose. We we work with all purpose, you know, with our clients because if we can establish that, a lot of questions, a lot of facilitation, so that people can articulate that easily. You know, Steve Stavs's purpose is to inspire and empower, you know, people to a life of thriving. Nice. And so I hold on to that. You know, every single time I walk through a doorway, Jay, I'm I'm saying. 
I want to make people feel inspired and empowered. I want to inspire them and then give them the actionable, actionable empowerment to actually do what they need to do. So purpose is something that my coaches will work with. And then community. You know, what this pandemic has shown is who are the people that are really close to you? Who are the people that have unconditional love for you? Who are the people that accept you, Jay, for who you are and Steve for who you are? Not based on performance, right. but just who you are. And then who are the people that delight in your uniqueness, who delight in your calling? And who are the people that you can call to celebrate your successes, that can you can call for when you're suffering and you're struggling with your lows? Who are those close people that you come into contact with and engage with? Because people have been isolated That's a lot of this, you know, fear and isolation and anxiety. People have been segregated. The fact that uh, the mask, not being able to touch people, not to be able to engage people. Uh, I mean, we can carry on and carry on. But I think as coaches, we want to make sure people really look at their communities, their multiple communities, their real friends, not, not these acquaintances or people that are, you know, in their space because of either their financial means or who they are from a status point of view. So those are the two big pillars that my coaches work with and then we've got the others which is environment we we look at air electromagnetic radiation light Uh, and so the principles are to use a biohacking audits to ensure that we're auditing different areas whether it's labs whether it's genetics whether it's a food intolerance whether it's the urine organic acids test whether it's a gi map test whatever it is there are measurables. Those are the biohacking. There are subjective measurables that are really, really important as well. But it's always underpinned by purpose and, and, and community. And I think that allows people to ensure that they've got those internal drivers and also they've got measurables in their life. You know, I'm, I've been a coach for seven years in the executive space, business space, and sure. I've found more and more people need measurables as a feedback mechanism. Now, yeah. it's not the only way. We do want to understand who we are and have awareness of our own bodies and have subjective sort of feedback mechanisms, but the measurables do help. So internal drivers, external drivers, measurables, and and I think that's the uniqueness that we bring to South Africa and Africa. That's awesome, man. Um, I mean, I could go a lot deeper, but, you know, for the purposes of this podcast, I want to get through a couple more mm. of some of the talking points because obviously they're relevant, especially with the biohacking Congress coming up. But uh, just one question on the health. Um, mm. If somebody is watching this podcast and uh, they're in the States, they're in Canada, they're anywhere. I mean, do you mm. do, you, you know, basically tell you, you, you they can work with you remotely, right? It's yeah. not just somebody that has to be on the ground in South Africa. Well, absolutely. And, you know, the pandemic, a a really grateful part that I have about the pandemic is we started working with international clients all over the world. And, you know, the the rand here, which is the currency here, Jay, is really weak. It's 15 or 16 rand to to a dollar. So and and, and in context of that, it's uh, really cheap for my international clients to to take us on to do the health audits to work on the different pillars that I've mentioned. So from from that point of view, it's been really, really great. And I I think with this collective consciousness, people are going to say, you know what, I'm sitting in Australia, I want to work with Jay. I want to work with Jay and his team. I'm sitting in Tokyo, I want to work with Steve and his team. What can his team bring me? Right Now, there is that aspect and there is aspects that we want to get together and we want to embrace people locally. I I really believe that it's the both and, it's not either or. And so even if I'm working with a client in Canada, which I have, or Austin, Texas, which I have in the last six months, I'm always saying to them, I'm here as a guide, I'm here as a facilitator, but on the ground, you do need to come in contact with people that are surrounding you. And I had a credible guy on the show, John Levy, he's a behavioral scientist, said that in the 80s, the average American had three close friends. In the 90s, it went down to two. In the 2000s, it was... Yeah, now it's probably none. So in terms of these very good close friendships, you know, how important that is and to build with the people that are going to surround you and celebrate you. And we've got that meme in at, at Matus Right, be surrounded. Just choose who you're going to surround, who's going to yeah. surround you and who you're going to surround. Well, I mean, again, it goes back to the, you know, everybody has heard the, you know, analogy, you're, you're only as good as the closest three or four friends that you have, right? Like yeah. when you surround yourself with mentors, you surround yourself mm-hmm. with wisdom teachers, you know, you're going to be that person in and of itself. We're mm-hmm. only, all we all, all, all each of us really is, is a projection. 
Yeah. Right. Like, but Jay, I, I want to, I want to get you to do something. You take your cl- closest three or four friends. Okay. You yep. stand in the middle of that circle. Yep. They stand holding hands. They embrace you, and what they declare is favor and blessing for you that you would live out your purpose and calling with at the highest level that you can, which is what you said. Do that often so that feel, that force, that yep. physical touch embraces you. I tell you, you're going to feel significant change. It's absolutely true. I mean, energy fields are everything. You know, I'm all, it's all, it's so, so I'm so grateful that I have this podcast with you today, yes. but it's, it's really true. I mean, everything is energy and frequency. Again, that's all we really are. We're not these physical bodies. Yes. We're, we're, we're conscious, sentient and alive in these physical bodies to ambulate, to experience and evolve and grow our souls, but we are that energy. So energy fields, you know, resonate with each other. So it's absolutely positively true. And, you know, back to what you were saying about, you know, not being in, um, you know, energy fields and close proximity of humans. I mean, that's part of the scale of the last two exactly. years. Exactly. Let's, let's, 100%. Let's, yeah. Let's be honest. You know, the mask covering your face, right? I, I mean, you know, God was made, you know, man was made in the image of God. So it's like, again, shrouding the face. All of this was black magic, sorcery, demonic, whatever you want to call it, witchcraft. I mean, there's exactly. all of this encompassing this but you know primarily it was again to lower the energy field mm-hmm. of the collective consciousness of humanity to you know again push people into fear but you're right it's it's mind blowing to think of the children yeah who have been taken out of schools who have been taken out of the collective expression of energy fields that you and I experienced growing up i mean i think of my own daughters right i mean my own daughters are now homeschooled they have a couple days a week that they do get a chance to go and in-person instruction. And obviously, as I told you off air, they're moving to Florida so that they can be back in a place where they're, you know, free of the fear, free of the mask bullshit, you know, so that they can be around other kids and stuff. But Hey, I'm kind of jealous because I won't be there. You know, I'm in Southern (laughs) California and they're across the country. So I have to deal with that. I have to, you know, that will be a, some form of a trauma that I will have to Mm. uh, experience and deal with and, 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 and integrate. Um, But Mm. it's just, it's part and parcel, man. You know, the thing about humanity, uh, and I know you know this, and I think we even talked about this on our podcast, but the only thing that's constant and inevitable is change. Yeah. And yet so many people resist change, you know? Yeah. So if there's, like you said, if there's anything that's really, truly good that came from the last two years and really is ongoing is adapting and pivoting. This is now where you have to, as a human, as a resonant human being, you have to be willing to take a chance, to shift everything, to find a better way, right? Because like, we're now in a time where like, again, you know, my wife came up with that last year. It's adapting and pivoting. We have to adapt and pivot on a moment's notice. I mean, if you, if you, if you can't do that, Steve, you're not going to serve your purpose. Mm -hmm. You're not going to truly embrace your calling because there's just too much, as you said, chaos and discombobulation now. Yeah, exactly. And now to pivot and be adaptable, the key is knowing your purpose and having the people around you supporting right. you and celebrating right. you because it's very, very difficult if you don't know that. You can surround your community. So I can say to you, Jay, you know, you might have to move out of California, but you know your purpose. You're surrounded by people. So go and do what you were called to do. And I'm here behind you, supporting you and celebrating you. Beautiful, man. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Okay, so a couple more points. Um, biotech in the future. Um, you know, I have been talking about this for now more than essentially two years. There is insanely amazing biomedical tech, uh, you know, acoustic vibrational healing tech. I mean, there's so much stuff popping up now, you know, everywhere that it's like you can't even keep up with it, right? Like, no matter how diligent you are, you can't keep up with it. So mm. You know, to me, that's almost more proof that we are this close to a golden age, you know, again, to this architecture of the new earth, as I like to call it, because it's out there now, Steve, all of this availability and wondrous, awe-inspiring technology is out there. So now it's just, again, you know, adopting it, getting to a place where, you know, it's affordable, uh, it's ubiquitous. And again, obviously more and more people know about it. And obviously places like the biohacking Congress and other yeah. um, places like that now are really exposing this stuff. But, you know, can you talk a little bit about what your thoughts are with biotech in the future? 
Well, I think, you know, the most important is, is it decentralized or centralized? Sure. And I think that's people like you that are really important and people like me getting together is, is it off the mainstream grid? You know, is it out sure. of the control of, you know, for want of big pharma, you know, big pharma is a double edged sword. You know, there's some incredible things that have come out of it, but there's some, you saw enslavement principles that have come out of it too. So once again, those biotech companies, I'm trusting that are people like you and me that are really want to transform people's lives, not enslave them, but it is an adjunct to their health and their wellness and their performance. So for example, we've got the Apollo, it's sound wave technology. We have brought it in here into South Africa. I've had incredible feedback already to deal with anxiety and stress, incredible neuro device developed by a psychiatrist. And it is not there to enslave you with side effects. It's there to empower you. It's there to help transform you. You can put it on children and it sets up a frequency, a vibrational healing frequency to help you navigate these things in this life. So I'm excited about wearables. I'm excited about interventions. What I'm The double-edged sword that I'm speaking about is who are the people bringing these products? Who are the people that are owning these companies? Someone like yourself in terms of peptides and what we discussed on my podcast, I'm excited about someone like you who owns this company because the heart and the motive behind it is to see people living their best life and living right. a life of thriving. And that's who we need to get behind, not the people that have this love of money and power, the root of all evil, to see people enslaved right. and to control them. That's the key with the biotech technologies. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, it brings up a talking point that I don't want to, because I, I don't get a lot of chances to talk to people as conscious as you are and also as knowledgeable about you as you are. So I'll bring it up. You know, the allopathic medical community is run by the dark side. Let's just be honest. You know, again, whoever the dark side is, we don't have to talk about that. I've said it many times before what I believe it to be, but big pharma, allopathic medicine, uh, big agra, you know, all the GMO, uh, you know, everybody who's in the, 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 the chemical, you know, uh, world, you know, biochemical, big, big biochemical, all of these companies and corporations are all about the money and, you know, destroying the environment, destroying human life. They don't give a shit. It's literally about the bottom line profit. And, you sure. know, when you really understand things from a corporate strategic level, a corporation by its very nature and existence, Steve, is literally designed to outcompete everyone else. So when you understand that, like there's no egalitarian, there's no equity, there's no divine principles in any of that shit. So all corporations by their very nature are literally the root of all evil. You've already said it. I mean, I mean, it's true. We cannot like talk this away at this point. So going back to your point, people who are working from the heart center, you know, who really are being motivated, and inspired through their calling, through their purpose, through divinity have to get together and we have to organize. And if it, if it comes down to us creating parallel systems, which ultimately will be a parallel world, hey, dude, then that's what's got to be, right? Because what the fuck is the metaverse? I'm sorry, I'm swearing. I'm very passionate right now. But what is the metaverse? I mean, the metaverse is the root of all of the dark sides, you know, architecture. This is where they want people ultimately enslaved, as you said, through this transhumanist man machine merge, this Autobot, Biobot, you know, give people uh, this ability to live forever in this artificial construct. People become amorphous blobs hooked up to these goggles, whatever it is, they buy real estate. I mean, it's absolute insanity what they are doing yeah. to the people who have not awakened, who do not have any connection to their heart chakra and who think that this is good, right? I mean, I mean, I'll mention the names. I don't care anymore. I mean, Peter Diamandis, Ray Kurzweil, these people are being enslaved or puppeted by demonic energy. This is not human. This is not divine, you know, becoming a robot, you know, going into this artificial construct and this artificial reality, whatever you want to call it. It's insane. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize like, okay, well, once you're hooked up and now they're in co control of your consciousness and they're in control of your thought waves, what do you think they're going to make you do? Exactly. Duh. I mean, they're, you're not going to have freedom of choice. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's, but again, hate the, don't hate the player, hate the game. 
You know, yeah. these people that are for this really have just not, again, from a compassionate empathy standpoint, have not awakened to what is happening. So you and I and people at our level of consciousness have to, and it's hard, right? Be compassionate and empathetic for these people, not sympathize, but to empathize and to be compassionate. You know, my wife yeah. is always pushing me down this pathway because, you know, she sees me like wanting to, you know, make statements and judgmental and be c c condemning this negativity. But I mean, dude, I, I, I had to say that and, and I want to get your comments on all of it, but I mm. mean, do you, do you agree that what I'm saying is, the truth. I mean, because again, you know, the, the Diamandises and the Kurzweils will say, yeah, but the guy that can't see will have a bionic eye. So how can you yeah. say that, Jay? You know, so there's yeah. there's different levels of this. And obviously, I'm not against biohacking, but I'm yeah. not, I will never support augmenting the human exactly. with AI. I, I will not support that. No, and I totally agree. I think, you know, at the end of the day, we're human beings, you know, what does that mean? Made in the likeness and image of God, you know, and so there is a very fine line, you know, because I think, you know, we look at transplants and taking someone else, as I remember the church is like uproar in terms of doing a human transplant, you know, you can't do that, or you can't do a blood transfusion, you know, that saved many people's lives, there's many, you know, religions that say you can't take blood from someone else, and so right. there is a fine line, into, and, and that's where, you know, I've got a saying, iron sharpens iron, is people right. like you, you know, I, I'm not scared of people asking me questions. I'm not scared of growing and maturing. We've all got blind spots. We've all got yeah. scotomas, these Definitely. scotomas that we don't see. Yeah. Now, getting and living your life in a metaverse, I don't think that <laughs> is being a human being, no. you know. You're not touching, feeling, embracing. You know, there's this incredible doctrine of laying it of hands. Jay, you must try it. Lay your hands on your wife and right. just bless her and bring Absolutely. favor on your daughters. You can't do that in the metaverse. You can't actually embrace right. someone. So right. I think we're changing the very fabric of human society there. I'm concerned. Do I think uh, excited about biotech in terms of how it can help people, the people that can't hear or can't yeah. see? Yes. But there's going to be have to come together. There's a collectiveness of people like you, yeah, other people, right. you know, the Ben Greenfields of the world, those people that are saying, hang on, there is a line somewhere. There is right. somewhere where we've got to draw it as a collective community and say, we're not going to embrace something because we're losing the very fabric of our humanity. Yeah, I'm with you, man. And, and, and by the way, we do that. There's a lot of touching. You know, I'm a, uh, you know, my love language is touch. So that's yeah. like really, really big, you know, in, in my family anyway, like we've all established our love languages and stuff, but yeah, yeah. man. And, and again, it is a fine line because I don't want to say that, you know, a uh, technology that might come out that is, uh, you know, of some form of, uh, electromagnetic frequency tech that, you know, creates or creates acoustic wave, right? So a very powerful, you know, sonic resonant harmonic frequency. That's cool. But yeah. like you said, when you all of a sudden now are giving up what it means to be human, which is clearly unhooking and going into a artificial reality, which is able to now program your thoughts, monitor your thoughts, as you said, you know, or we talked about, you know, getting a chip where they know how much money you have in your bank account. They know whether or not you've been vaccinated, you know, I mean, that shit is a whole different realm. Yeah. And yeah. That's to me where you, you got to have like, no, I'm divine. I'm sovereign. I'm free. I'm a human being. And I'm going to embrace my human beingness by saying, uh-uh, I'm opting out of that. And I, and again, I've told people this, like it goes back to the parallel systems. If people like you and I are de, 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 you know, unplugged, let's call it that way. We're unplugged <laughs> from our banks. We're unplugged from yeah. our payment processors. Then you know what, dude, we'll build another one. Yeah. We'll get with other people. We'll live on a commune. We'll live in like an eco-friendly zone of like, you know, high vibration, high conscious beings. And if we have to practice, you know, what Tellinger does, which is Ubuntu, which is the sharing, you know, everybody, you know, yeah. like you said, everybody has a unique talent and skill. And now you're, you're bringing that to the external world that you're living in right now temporarily, because this is only temporarily these bodies, right? But it's like, you're bringing out what you can do best. And then collectively, everybody's doing the same thing. And then we don't exactly. have money. We exactly. don't have currency, whether it's digital or fiat. We have our willingness to contribute yeah. at our highest and best to the greater good of the collective, which is everybody in the, in the community. And honestly, Steve, that is not woo-woo. As you said off air, we're a lot closer 
to that reality than people even want to think about. And that's the beauty about Africa, Jay. You know, it's unfortunately there's chaos in terms of crime and there's poverty and, and you know, there's these things that are not first world at all. I live sure. in a very third world and but first world country in many aspects. But to buy land, to put organic produce on there, you know, organic animals together, community together, to use hydroponics or aquaponics, to spend the time actually becoming self-sustainable, you know, to look at borehole water, to get off the grid from an electricity point of view. These things are possible. Right. And it is happening in Africa because yeah. the regulation is far less strict and severe right. than other Western countries, you know. So we've had an easy ride in COVID from a regulation point of view, and it's it's much easier to become self-sustainable. Yeah. And South Africa is an amazing place. Absolutely spectacular natural beauty. Mm. Um, you know, that's, I mean, dude, maybe that's where people like me are going to go. I mean, yeah. I already told you, my wife and I are looking at Mexico yeah. right now. Like we're this close to pulling trigger and buying land in Mexico. You know, Mexico right now is the freest country in the world. And when it comes to COVID restrictions, like, the, you yeah. know, the, the, the president of Mexico is like, no, nope, not going to do it. Don't give a shit. We need your money. Come in touristas. Right. So it's like, but there are other places too. So, sure. you know, as time goes on and, you know, like you said, I don't think it's a long time, you know, I don't, I'm not looking yeah. at like a five or 10 year horizon before shit really gets weird. It's going to be in the next one to three years. And that yeah. may be also, you know, too long of a timeline. So, you know, people, as you said, if you're, if you're serving from your purpose and you're, and your true calling and you're really embracing that and you know what it is, it's a lot easier to adapt and pivot. And to get up literally in the middle of the day or maybe even the middle of the night and take your clothes and whatever, you know, things that you have that you can carry with you or drive with you and you leave. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I again, I, I don't think that that's out of the realm of possibility for a lot of people to understand that that is, you know, kind of the path that we're walking on. So the last couple of points that you have we'll cover real quick mm. uh, is longevity and chronic mm. pain. Mm. Uh, a lot of people today especially from the last two years have chronic pain right mm. they didn't go to they didn't they didn't do any kind of uh, wellness or exercise or functional strength training they didn't do yeah. stretching they didn't do yoga you know they just literally sat there ate like shit mm. in autonomic <laughs> lockdown yeah. uh and just you know destroyed themselves highly inflamed too much body mm. fat now uh, you know, diet's gone to shit. So, I mean, a lot of these people are chronically in chronic pain. So, you know, just talk a little bit about maybe some treatment, you know, um, mm. modalities as far as the way you guys coach people when you have somebody that comes in with chronic pain. Yeah. A great question. I think, uh, you know, chronic pain is uh, really on the increase. If you look what's happened to the opioid crisis in America, you know, worldwide, it, it is something that people have been using and using excessively to deal with pain. And so, you know, once again, I think what I've learned more and more, it does take a training of a child into adolescence and teenager. That's very, very important. Obviously, people that are stuck in that state of ill health, we've got to help transform them. I, I found in you know, the last two, three years, things like breath work, uh, mindfulness, and then getting them into a place where they can do extremely, uh, you know, techniques that really move the needle. So I've been practicing regenerative medicine for, you know, 23 years. I, I found that these natural constituents that can really regenerate joints and deal with pain and put the position where people can now make the changes because they're not in so much chronic pain, make the lifestyle changes. You know, someone who's grossly obese, who's had chronic pain in their joints, who's had chronic pain in their body, it's very, very difficult for them to be motivated to make the changes because of what's happening to all these catabolic hormones, you know, things like cortisol that it's, you know, flowing in their veins and through every single cell. So regenerative medicine is my game, you know, using things like prolotherapy, PRP, using a lot of ozone, it's moved the needle significantly. Uh, obviously, breath work, something Patrick McEwen, he's been on the podcast yeah. twice, incredible person in terms of breath work. So I think we've learned significant things in the last probably 10 to 15 years in terms of chronic pain. I've lectured in chronic pain for over 21 years now. Nice. And I think in terms of using these different modalities, we can really mitigate against the effects of chronic pain, which Big Pharma has really used to their advantage because they've enslaved people through Absolutely. pain and through these opioids. And that's why there's such a big crisis worldwide. So in summary, I think breath work has been a revelation for me the last three years. And then regenerative medicine is becoming really sort of affordable and available to a lot more people. Yeah, until they shut it down. 
<laughs> until we are yeah. literally, uh, you know, brewing these things up from our laboratories in our yeah. basements or wherever they are. But yeah, I mean, look, dude, like, you know, we didn't, you know, you're saying regenerative medicine. I'll just say peptides, right? Like, I mean, there are peptides yeah. that, uh, along with people who are, again, you know, I always, I always have to say this question, you know, if you're a person who's highly inflamed and not taking care of yourself, peptides won't do jack shit, right? Yeah. For somebody who's actually in, in good shape and living mm. a clean lifestyle and peptides are, uh, golden age agents and, and obviously breath work. I mean, you know, uh, you know, there's so much stuff with the yeah. idea of expanding the consciousness with, you know, ketamine drips and all these other things that are out there right now, again, psychedelics, psilocybin's, uh, you know, that's, it's funny that you just, you're, you're saying that because my wife, you know, we were just talking about this yesterday. She's like, if so many people, if people understood that it wasn't just about the physicality, it's not about just yeah. the movement patterning. It's about the brain accepting the idea that they're worthy of having improvement yeah. of having a better physique of losing body fat of not being inflamed of not being in pain but you know obviously a lot of coaches especially you know are, are addressing the physical root causes but it's also the mental aspect right like are you going to consider yourself worthy of making these changes and stuff like that yeah. so it's and i know you do all this but it, it's a holistic thing Absolutely. Especially as we move forward. So, you know, people that are really adoptive or ado adaptive of these holistic ideas that, you know, you know, the, think of the ancient Greeks, right? Like Aristotle said, you know, a sound mind build a sound body. So it's like you have to address the root cause, but we also now have to adapt the mind body because Absolutely. if the mind isn't accepting it, the body won't do the same. And I think a lot of people don't really address the mind. They just address the body, which is OK. Mm. But now it's time to expand. Mm. Yeah, and look, you've got to look at the most, you know, the biggest bleeding point. Some people, right. they're so blocked in terms of their mind because exactly. they have so much pain. Right. You help that biggest bleeding area, and then all of a sudden you can work on the mind. And that's where the purpose and community comes in because when can a person receive that? You know, there's, right. there's people are on this continuum. When can they receive the treatment that you can give them that's going to result in that long-term transformation? Sometimes you've got to get their pain down. And, you know, yeah. that's the double-edged sword of Western medicine. Yep. If it's correctly used in short term and it's not there to enslave people, it can be brilliant. It's the continual enslavement and use of that medicine that actually enslaves people to that drug or that uh, you know intervention. So I, I think it's the art of the biohacker like yourself and many others. And that's why I'm excited about biohacking. Why? Because yeah. it's personal health optimization. Right. We want to empower right. people to do it. You know, from, yeah. from, I, I envision a world in 10 years' time where everybody's got an ozone machine. I mean, ozone's right. been used since 1840. <laughs> there are thousands and thousands of studies. It's safe. It's effective. You can Crazy. treat people so easily, you know, from rectal to vaginal insufflations to putting it through your ears, ear insufflations. You know, so I think what's going to happen is people are going to become more empowered with these yeah, modalities, no and I think whether it's peptides, whether it's ozone, whatever it is, even looking at some of the products that you've got, um, it's going to be more accessible to people out there. And, uh, you know, I think that's why I'm excited with regards to chronic pain uh, and helping people that really struggled for a long time that have been caught up in sort of this Western, you know, medical sort of dogma. Yeah. I mean, uh, let me put up your socials and stuff like that. Uh, profound mm -hmm. podcast, you know, just to react or comment to that. I mean, mm -hmm everything is an inversion, right? So it's like, once you learn that almost everything that we've been taught from Western medicine, allopathic medicine, you know, corporate, corporate, the corporatocracy, I mean, everything that they've even taught us in the school, Steve, is usually made up. Yeah. Right. I mean, I can't even imagine in the next, you know, cause I'm in total agreement with you, but in the next 10 years, yes, there'll be full on, sovereignty and empowerment for the individual because all of the tech will be made available. Yes, you got to pay for it probably or you have to access it, but you'll but it'll be out there, but it's like it's going to be mind-blowing how much is revealed. How many people will actually be able to handle the truth? You know, I always think back of the Tom Cruise, Jack Nicholson, you know, whatever, a few good men, you know, you can handle the truth, right? So it's like when you've brainwashed foul for thousands of years, through lies, through inculcation and indoctrination, through the schools. Let's be honest. Let, the colleges are the worst. The lies that they have yeah, sure. propagated. Absolutely. Right? So who can really adapt and pivot? Who will be able to mentally alter their awareness 
from what they've been told to what is now the truth, right? A lot of people, Steve, won't be able to do this. I mean, again, you know, my buddy always talks about it's a reality apocalypse. Who can handle a reality apocalypse? You know, it's like the people who have, you know, gone out there and were forced because of their job to get the V. Well, when the stuff comes out and it's yeah. like, okay, now it's like known that it's not good, right? Well, how many of those people can adapt and say, you know what? It was a bad decision. I was forced into it. It's cool. How can I heal myself? Exactly. Most people can't even do that. They were literally yeah. like shake their head, ignore it. Nope. Don't believe that. It yeah. was the right thing to do. It's still the right thing to do. I'm going to yeah. go to my deathbed saying that. So, you know, the key to, to wrap it is to say that each of us has the ability to change, to accept a new theory, a new idea, a new opinion. And, and take it in and, you know, again, ask that question, you know, the conscious question, you know, does this serve me? Hmm. If it doesn't, you let it go. You're unattached. Cool. But if it does and it can help you, then you know what? You adapt and you pivot and you change your ideology. And I think yeah. that great thinkers, doers, achievers of all times in history have been able to adapt on the fly when in the presence of new data or new logic, or again, a new idea. And that separates the winners from the losers because the losers cannot adapt and pivot. They cannot change their mindset. They're totally rigid and inflexible. Yeah, that's right. And if you look at Chinese medicine, the definition of qi is reserve. That exactly. qi is reserve that allows you to adapt and pivot. Exactly. You've got to look at what is building your qi, your reserve, your adaptability. It goes back to the same thing of purpose and community. 100%. Steve, you are amazing. This is an amazing podcast. So guys, uh, made to thrive.co.za is his website. Uh, his social media handles, IG is Steve Stabs ZA, LinkedIn, Steve Stabs, and then YouTube, Steve Stabs. Steve, man, let me give you the final thoughts, man. Thank you so much for coming on today's show. You have mm -hmm. been an absolute uh, just fountain of knowledge. I mean, amazing stuff that we talked about today. And again, I'm, I'm grateful at your courage. I'm grateful for the things you're doing for the world, but uh, final thoughts. Yeah, well, thanks so much again, uh, Jay. What a privilege, what an honor to to be on the show and to be part of your journey. You know, at the end of the day, it's people like you that we can walk this journey together and, you know, even look at the products you've got on your website and who you are. The motive behind it is crucial. You know, the motive behind why are people doing these things? You know, are they doing it to serve unconditionally like you? Uh, then those are the people that we want to collaborate with. Those are the people we want to walk with. So, you know, my message of hope is there. There is revelation that needs to be grasped. You know, anyone is, uh, you know, can tap into it. Uh, no one is past redemption or revelation. Uh, your health, your wellness, your body, your body is created to fulfill the purpose. You know, you, you've you been given by God a unique purpose and a unique calling. This body, you need to nourish and cherish it and look after it so that it can fulfill the calling and purpose, you know, that the God has given you. So uh, those are my thoughts, Jay. I'm excited, uh, you know, to partner with people like you. I'm excited about Africa. It's Africa's time, you know, South yeah. Africa yeah. in terms of Nelson Mandela, what he brought. You talk about unconditional love. You talk about breaking a system of apartheid of you know significant racism and um you know ostracizing people for so long I, i'm excited that there's a blend of society it's a it's a multicolored rainbow nation uh and yes despite the pain we've got and the hurt we've got i think africa is going to rise up and uh, i think it's not centralized like the rest of the world yes it's got you know third world problems but sure. i think this continent in terms of its resources its people how they work together and how what we've come through is, yeah. you know, I'm excited. That's awesome, man. And I would agree. I mean, you know, you the, the key is, you know, just to finish the podcast up is, like you said, decentralization. Decentralization is the future. It's the now. I mean, it really is where we go into a higher dimensional state of existence, a higher state of awareness. Uh, people have to be non-resistant. People have to be adaptable. People have to be malleable. People literally have to be able to, again, you know, go from a corporatized world and system and city to a farm, you know, living on off the grid, you know, living without electricity and power. I mean, again, how many people could do that right now? Not many. Yeah. You know, this is a exactly. modernized, brainwashed, conditioned world. You know, they talk about you know, all the young kids who don't even know how to even create food. They don't know how to, you know, other than use a microwave or open up a package, 
how would they even eat? Right. So it's like, we're in a different place and time. And it's again, how quick could it all shift? What happens if in, in, in an EMP, right? Like there's so many ideas that could potentially become reality. And again, are you, you know, living your highest purpose and calling able to adapt and pivot should something like that happens. And obviously it's like people like us, you know, out here talking about this so that people do have backup plans and people do have ideas on how they can shift, you know, in and, in and when that time comes. But again, Steve, man, I really appreciate you coming on the show. So guys and gals who are watching the Jay Campbell podcast, support the amazing people like Steve, go to his website again, made to thrive.co.za, his social media, Steve Stavs, ZA, and of course go to LinkedIn and YouTube and check him out. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.